Greetings YouTube, Kudo Kun here. If you've never met me before, I'm basically one of the streamers who's going to be covering the Bazaar when it finally comes out on the 30th, and I have a few video ideas that I like to get out before then. For this first video, I want to do something kind of fun that I don't think anybody else is really going to do. Kind of bring something new to the table here. I'm going to go over my top 10 personal favorite OCs that I've made for the game. I'm known for being kind of long-winded if you've never seen one of my videos before, so I'll try and keep this intro a bit short, but I do want to go over a couple of things. Firstly, this should be pretty obvious, but I'll just say it anyway. I obviously am not affiliated with Tempo in any way. Rainad has no idea who I am, nor will he ever know who I am. I'm also not telling the company that these are picks that they should seriously consider putting into their game. This is more just like me daydreaming or like fantasizing about the possibilities of the game. And while unlikely, if one or two ideas end up making it into the game, chances are this is something that they've already planned years or months in advance and probably has nothing to do with my video. So if there happens to be something in the future that seems similar to something I mentioned here, I can imagine it would be a bit annoying if somebody accused them of taking an idea from a video like this when it's an idea that they already had and were working on long before this video ever came out. So, you know, just be cool about it. Although if an idea did make it in, that would be pretty awesome. Last thing I'll say is I'm well aware that some of the mechanics and things I'm going to bring up are a bit unfeasible, especially at this stage of development. So before you leave a comment like, well, there's no way something like that would ever work, or that's way too complicated for them to implement, or it's just a beta, so you're never going to see something like this. I know. Again, this is just me kind of fantasizing about the possibilities of the game, and who knows, maybe I'll bring up something that brings out a fantasy in you as well. In fact, if after watching this video you have any ideas for a character you would like to see in the bazaar or a class or a concept, feel free to share it in the comments section below and we'll all daydream together. Actually, one last thing I'll bring up. Uh, don't pay too close attention to these images. They're basically just AI generated images that uh, give a, a feel or an idea for the kind of character that I'm talking about. I'm not, I didn't design these. I didn't, I wasn't able to tweak them and make them look exactly how I would make them look if I were going to turn them into a real idea. They're just AI generated nonsense to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So yeah. The first class I have for you is the Actress. In battle, the Actress has a stacking debuff on the opponent called Starstruck. Starstruck is a stacking debuff that would naturally decrease the activation time of weapons every time they hit. The idea here is this is like a well-known actress and uh, the person fighting against her doesn't necessarily want to take it too hard on her or fight against her uh, in front of the entire bazaar, obviously, so they have a sort of hesitation when it comes to attacking her. Meta-wise, this would also be a good counter against spreads that just activate as quickly as possible. The actress's items are all going to be costume pieces, so when you collect items in the events before a battle, uh, you're basically trying to collect different parts of different costumes that maybe fit different genres, so like a western theme, maybe a, a, a knight theme, or a romance theme. Basically, just different genres will have different costume pieces associated with them. The more props or items you have that fit one particular theme, uh, the better they all get. So you are basically trying to find one costume set that you're really trying to collect and try and collect as many pieces as you can of that particular set. And while you can mix and match different costume pieces together, um, it is encouraged that you try and find one set that you can stick to completely, depending on which props and costume pieces you find during the events. There could even maybe be like a special event that you only get to see once you've collected all five or six pieces of one costume. Obviously, to limit this, you would probably have to make it so that no matter how big a costume or a set of props was, uh, it would always take up a little bit over half of your spread, so there's no way to have two full sets at once. You have to have one full set and then mix and match pieces from another set. Next up is the Dancer. For the Dancer, I'm thinking instead of buying items and things necessarily, you can also buy dance moves, and your spread can involve these different dance moves. 
So the idea here is if certain dance moves activate after other dance moves, there's some kind of buff or bonus associated. So I don't know if this would be something categorical, like if you have like a first stage move and then you follow it up with like a second stage move that kind of plays off of each other, or if it's just, you know, after one activates, it gives a buff to the next thing in the line that activates. But I like this idea of a kind of tempo play style where it's not just important to get your stuff activating as quickly as possible, but you want stuff to go off in a specific order. And I think that fits the idea of a dancer really well. Obviously, you are still, you know, in a giant marketplace. So there are still items and maybe different uh, outfits and things that you could pick up. But I think I like the idea more of your main damage output being associated with timing these different dance moves. Maybe during the events you could pay to learn different dance moves or you could buy lessons that would give you uh, better dance moves that you already have in your arsenal. Not too sure about all that. I just like the idea of one move leading into another move and giving it a nice buff. Similar to that, I have the Fencer. Uh, I think somebody with a rapier who has that kind of similar play style, but kind of in a more defensive way would be pretty awesome. As I said before, this would be a very defensive class. So when one of your techniques or items goes off, it opens up something called a parry window. When cards on your opponent's side of the board activate during your quote unquote parry windows, it would give you some kind of effect. So for example, a very basic effect could be reflects 10% of the damage an item deals to you back to the player. So let's say your parry window is open for two seconds. Uh, after that item or technique activates, then for the next two seconds, every item on your opponent's side of the board that activates in that two seconds uh, reflects 10% of the damage back to them. So you take 10% less damage and they take that damage instead. Just like with the Dancer, I like the idea of learning techniques and having techniques also be a part of your spread rather than just collecting items. I think there could be a way to incorporate that into the events like spending money at uh, dojos, for example, or uh, basically different training places to learn techniques rather than just get items. The effects could also be varied, so you could have some that if they hit in that particular parry window, uh, they actually heal you. Uh, there could be some really powerful ones with a very small parry window that disarm, so stop an item from activating for a certain amount of time. You know, who knows? Sky's really the limit with an idea like this. I think the meta around a character like this would probably be to try and stagger your parry windows, you know, have some that activate really quickly and then have some that activate a little bit later to counter heavier hitting items. And maybe there could be some special items that even increase the amount of time for your parry windows or stagger the activation of your items a little bit to time your parry windows a little bit better. Next up is the tour guide. The tour guide is extremely unique. Instead of just collecting items, you also have a group of tourists that you bring with you to battle. In between the battles themselves, your events would be uh, focused on trying to keep your tour guide crowd as entertained as possible. And if you can manage to do this, then the tour guide actually gets bigger and bigger, becoming a slightly larger item on your board, maybe starting out as like one or two people as a small item, and then eventually becoming a huge crowd as a large item. So during the events, if you spend too much time shopping and not doing anything very interesting, uh, your group of tourists gets weaker and smaller and becomes a lot less reliable. But if you focus on uh, events that would keep your group entertained, like seeing big monsters or getting into fights, or maybe even there could be specific groups that have specific interests, like some want to go see shops or some want to go see monsters, for example, then meeting those conditions would make your group bigger. And who knows, maybe you could even have a system where you have multiple groups of people that you can bring around with you. 
items themselves, of course, would also be included. So maybe you could have photography equipment. Maybe you could have things like vehicles, the tour bus. You know, there could be also things outside of just the tour groups as well. But I think the tour groups would be like the main thing that you want to focus on building with a character like this. Moving away from my high concept characters, next up I have the Bonesmith. The Bonesmith would be a very brutish, basic monster hunting character who their events would mostly focus around uh, finding, tracking, and then eventually killing giant monsters. And then your reward for doing these battles would be either materials that you could use to build specific items or, you know, if you wanted to dumb it down a little bit, because I think this kind of character would have to be a very simple character, just a pick up and play brute force kind of character. Maybe after you beat a monster, you just get to pick an item to make out of that particular battle. Now, you may be thinking, well, this sounds an awful lot like uh, Monster Hunter, and <laughs> you're not wrong, but there have been many board games that have come out in this past decade that have taken this idea and made it really fun, and because this game is based on a kind of a similar idea to a lot of board games that I love to play, things like Kingdom Death, like Primal the Awakening, funnily enough, like the Monster Hunter board game as well, I think this kind of idea would work really well for a game like the Bazaar. And since a lot of my ideas are about this, these complicated webs of going and seeing certain events and trying to min-max certain properties on your board, I think just having a character that turns the bones of giant monsters into weapons is just <laughs> a very simple but very cool idea. Next up is the pack leader. I haven't really named any of my characters, but I do like to call this one Titan or Goliath. I think those are really fun names for him. And I first I thought it would be cool to have like a beast master who could bring animals into battle. But then I thought, you know what, what if the person leading these animals was just an animal themselves and they were just a very tiny charismatic dog? So our good boy Titan here can use his money that he wins during battles and events buying different types of food. And depending on the kinds of food that you have, you attract different animals to your group. So like the heavy hitting carnivores would want you to be buying different kinds of meat. Herbivores who are more defensive or supportive in nature would want you to buy vegetables. You could buy fish if you want to attract really quick birds. Really, the possibilities are limitless. You could even combine different types of food, like if you have both meat and fish, uh, you could maybe attract bears who like both of those things, and the bears are a much more powerful type of animal. If you wanted to take it a step further, it could be possible to have special items that are like really high quality, high cuisine types of food that attract really rare or really cool animals to come fight for you. I just think it's great. It's a zoo deck, but with an actual zoo full of zoo animals. Next up is the thief. I'm not going to lie. I just really like this archetype of character, and I would like to see something like this in the game. For thief, I'm thinking just like a basic cloak and dagger thief. I'm sure they could come up with something a lot better if they have something like this in their game down the line. But uh, <laughs> because this is just the archetype that I really like, I wanted to sort of fantasize about what a character like that would look like here. Something very high speed, high risk, high reward, where maybe your items get some kind of very, very big buff the very first time they activate and then have a weaker effect for every other time they activate. So it's like really high burst damage during the first five to 10 seconds of the battle. And then uh, hopefully the rest of your damage or items being enough to finish them off before too many rounds go by. When it comes to the actual thieving part of the thief, I'm not really sure how I'd want that to go. Obviously, the uh, safest route is you could have events that are about trying to pickpocket or trying to steal certain items from shops, and that's fine. But as far as battle goes, even though I don't think it would make the other player feel super good, maybe if you beat a player within a certain time period, yeah, you could steal a few gold from them. Again, I, I, think, I think they would always avoid trying to put a mechanic like that in because they're trying to make this as uh how do i even put this 
They're trying to decrease the salt levels as much as possible and keep the sodium low. And the sodium's gonna raise if you're constantly losing to a thief character and constantly getting money stolen from you. But hey, if you wanted a slightly kinder way to have the same kind of idea, maybe the thief could win a little bit extra gold, depending on how quickly they uh, win a match, and it doesn't have anything to do with taking the money away from your opponent. Items, you know, I just want the classic. Give me some nice looking capes and robes, and give me some daggers and throwing knives, and I'll be a happy kudo. While we're on the subject of things that aren't clever at all and just fit my personal love of these character archetypes, we have the Wanderer. Again, this is just something that I really love, you know, a Japanese aesthetic uh, warrior, ronin samurai who uses katanas and maybe even some ninja weaponry. I don't know. Again, this is just based on things that I personally love and I would like to see a character who represents that in the game. To make their battle style unique, I'm thinking maybe you could have uh, fighting styles. So for example, uh, since rounds are separated into 30 seconds, I think it'd be cool if your items kind of transformed as the battle went on. So you could have a theme for each third of the round. So for the first 10 seconds, you were in your, I don't know if we wanted to go based on uh, the days. You could have like a morning stance, a midday stance, and then like a, an evening stance, right? So for the first 10 seconds of the battle, all of your weapons had like morning katana or morning slash or morning whatever. And then after 10 seconds have elapsed, they would all transform into their midday versions and the midday versions would have uh, different stats. I suppose you could do something the inverse of the thief where uh, your stats just got bigger and bigger as the battle went on. So your morning stuff was the weakest and then midday was like the average and then all of your evening stuff hit really hard. I'm not totally sure. Phases of the moon would also be a cool idea here. So uh, your first third of the match could be like your crescent moves and then it go opens up into like your half moves and then your full moves. I don't know. <laughs> this is something that I've been thinking about a lot. I'm not really sure how exactly I would implement something like this, but I just think the theming would be really on point. So next up would be Demolitions, aka Fireworks. Also, the fireworks expert being like this kid, I didn't I didn't do that intentionally. I didn't purposefully make them a kid. I do think it's an adorable idea, but I also don't know if we necessarily want to have a kid in the game that your opponent's shooting with a sniper rifle or dropping boulders on top of. So the main gameplay gimmick of the fireworks expert is they would have an item on them that would be like their big firework. It's basically an item that would always go off exactly one time during a match. And then the events that you do in between is tweaking this firework to change its size, to change how much damage it does, and to maybe even give it other effects. Like if you were adding ice to your firework, it could be like a gigantic ice firework that when it went off would uh, slow down your opponent's entire board. Basically, I want this to be like a one-time use item that has this huge effect, but that you get back after the end of a battle. You're trying to tailor this firework to make it as effective as possible while limiting the downsides. This is another reason that I think fireworks works really well for a concept like this, because, you know, having something that goes off and just does one big spectacular thing is just what a firework is, right? It goes off, it's this fleeting bit of beauty that just fades into the distance, and then during the next match, you get to watch it go off again. Other items, of course, could be firework-themed or firework-related or explosive-related, but you would always have like this one main centerpiece that went off and did just something grand during the battle. Finally, we're going to end it on one of my more fun concepts, the salesman. For the salesman, I was thinking a kind of slimy Saul Goodman kind of character who basically tried to push junk on other people to make as much money as possible. During battle, he could maybe be like a buff debuff character who um, basically annoyed the opponent to death by trying to push different like sales pitches and stuff on them or maybe buffed themselves by uh, having some buffs and debuffs go off through phone calls or like trading stocks or whatever. I don't know. You know, <laughs> it's basic salesman stuff. 
No, the real fun comes with the salesman events. So the idea behind the salesman events is uh, you have the chance to pull off essentially scams on uh, other people. And even though these could be very lucrative, you get a lot of money from pushing junky items on people or, uh, you know, getting people involved in pyramid schemes or just any kind of scam that you can think of could be in as an event. You get a lot of money from doing it and you can stack money very quickly. However, you also have another resource to manage called reputation. And as your reputation goes down, you know, obviously people around the bazaar are going to want to deal with you less and less. So if you were very reckless and you just tried to get as much money as possible by pulling off these scams and uh, basically being as scummy as possible, you know, slip and fall season, you get it. You would actually lose access to specific shops in the bazaar who would just not deal with you anymore or they could potentially be replaced with more shady black market counterparts of themselves who would either sell you the items at higher prices, basically negating all the money you were getting from pulling the scams off in the first place, or they would sell you shoddier items who basically were the same item but had slightly lowered effects because they weren't the actual item. They were like counterfeit versions of the items you would normally get. So it would either be a balance act of trying to get as much money as possible while also trying to keep your reputation high so you weren't getting locked out of all of these shops and, you know, being able to buy the good stuff with all the money you were making, or it was a very high risk, high reward thing where you were, you know, out there taking money from people and, you know, running the chance that you were not going to be able to deal with the right people, but potentially being able to spend all of this money you were making from scamming people on getting the best and the coolest items. Alrighty, if you made it to the end of the video, thank you so much for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you all on the 30th. Don't forget, if you have a really cool idea for a character for the bazaar, leave it in the comment section below. I am looking forward to seeing what you guys come up with, and I will see you next time.